Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. A reading from the book of Job. From the heart of the tempest, the Lord gave Job his answer. He said, Who pent up the sea behind closed doors when it leapt tumultuous out of the womb, when I wrapped it in a robe of mist? and made black clouds its swathing bands. When I marked the bounds it was not to cross, and made it fast with a bolted gate. Come thus far, I said, and no farther. Here your proud waves shall break. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. The love of Christ overwhelms us when we reflect that if one man has died for all, then all men should be dead. And the reason he died for all was so that living men should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died 
and was raised to life for them. From now onwards, therefore, we do not judge anyone by the standards of the flesh. Even if we did once know Christ in the flesh, that is now how we know him. And for anyone who is in Christ, there is a new creation. The old creation has gone, and now the new one is here. The word of the Lord. Be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. With the coming of evening, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us cross over to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him just as he was in the boat, and there were other boats with him. Then it began to blow a gale, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that it was almost swamped. But he was in the stern, his head on the cushion, asleep. They woke him and said to him, Master, do you not care? We are going down. And he woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Quiet now, be calm. And the wind dropped and all was calm again. Then he said to them, Why are you so frightened? How is it that you have no faith? They were filled with awe and said to one another, Who can this be? Even the wind and the sea obey him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. There was a story in the news last week about a man who ended up in the mouth of a whale, a humpback whale, for a short time. The whale didn't like him and spat him out fairly quickly. But that man will always have something interesting to relate at parties. It brings to mind Jonah, of course, and the reference to the sea in the first reading, which clearly shows that as powerful as the sea is, it is under the control of Almighty God. In the scriptures, the sea, the wind, and the storm are often seen as forces of evil and chaos, which only God can control. The power of the sea appears as something to be feared because it cannot be harnessed and tamed. But the storm at sea can also stand for the trials and tribulations which the righteous suffer and from which only God can save them. In those circumstances, it's only when the storm strikes 
that we discover what type of faith we have or if we have any faith at all. And faith here means not so much a belief in God as trust in God. In times of adversity, our strong faith may give way to fear and lack of safety, our sense of danger, and therefore what is harmful to us can sometimes be out of perspective. I once sat on the small ledge of a cliff in South Africa with a 300 foot drop below. I think it was a kind of dare with my traveling companion, rather foolish. But what we see as dangerous to ourselves and what God sees as dangerous don't always coincide. We perhaps tend to see threats to our health and physical well-being as hugely important. It can be very casual about threats to our spiritual well-being. Regardless of when or how they arise, storms are about changing conditions. Life can suddenly get overwhelming and out of control. Things don't go our way. Circumstances seem too much to handle. Order gives way to chaos. We're sinking. The water is deep and the new shore is a distant horizon. The disciples in the gospel are quick to make the storm on the Sea of Galilee all about Jesus. Do you not care? We're going down. The sleeping Jesus is in the same boat and with the same storm as the disciples. He's surrounded by the same water as the disciples and blown by the same wind, beaten by the same waves. His sleep reveals what he regards as the real danger to the disciples. Quiet now, be calm. Jesus speaks to the wind and the sea, but is not changing the weather as much as inviting the disciples to change. He's speaking to the wind and the waves within them. The disciples have been pointing to what's going on outside them. Jesus points to what is going on inside them. Why are you so frightened? How is it that you have no faith? His words are more about us than the circumstances of our lives and the storms that we meet. Storms happen. Faith, more faith, better faith, stronger faith, the right kind of faith, do not eliminate the storms of our lives. Faith does not change the storm, it changes us. Faith does not take us around the storm, but through the storm. Faith allows us to see and know that the Lord is there with us. Faith is what allows us to be still, to be peaceful in the midst of the storm. We can look for examples and find examples of lived faith to saints such as Augustine, the great North African bishop, telling his flock to set their vision on God's eternal city while they had to watch the slow crumbling of the Roman Empire. The martyrs of this city of York, hearing the rattling of the jailer's keys, heralding their imminent execution. Saint Gemma, the Italian girl afflicted with excruciating physical pain, but uniting it to the sufferings of Christ. Saint John Bosco, trusting that God would provide for him in helping the destitute of industrial Turin. Or St. Philip Neri, calmly waiting for the Lord to remove the opposition, threatening his renewal of the city of Rome. It was their faith 
which saw these people through great and violent storms. Faith is like a shield given to us by the Lord, but we do have to pick it up and use it. Or it's like a gun which must not be allowed to sit and rust, else it becomes useless when the need arises. Rather, it has to be kept in good nick, ready for when the circumstances call for it. When we make an act of faith, such as, Jesus, I trust in you, or Lord, I believe in you and all you have revealed to us, if we do that, we strengthen the faith within us. And certainly, one should make acts of faith in the midst of a storm, but it will be all the more strong if we've already made them before they were needed. Who can this be? Even the wind and the sea obey him. We know who it is, the Lord God Almighty, who is with us in every storm and with us until the end of time.
Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action, we may make of, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder. To rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so, as with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Terence Patrick, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servant. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, 
mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph her spouse, her blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. We please, so go and we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven. Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, to command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation of the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, 
Felicity Perpetua, Agatha Lucy, Agnes Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. But let us, we beseech you into thy company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with light, bless them, and bestow them upon us. To him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your
the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called for the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter the land of my grace, but only to say the word of my soul.
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 